Wake up, sleepyheads. I'm the Sandman. And I'm Scarecrow. And, and we're, we're all right. Ready. Thanks for joining us once again on Keeping It Real as we count down to 13 weeks to Halloween. Today, we're going to be reviewing the 1931... Uh, 25. 1925 yeah. Phantom of the Opera. This is actually a... Uh, there's no sound at all. Silent film. Silent film. And honestly, it's my first silent film besides Steamboat Willie, which I don't really count because I only watched like 10 minutes of it. But guys, this is Keep It Real. Let's get right into the video. <laughs> All right, so this is a pretty straightforward film. It is based off of a novel, and I've watched the 2007 version, which was great, but it starts out these two new owners buy this opera house, and before they leave, the old owners tell them, hey, it's played by a ghost called the Phantom, and nobody has seen him, but all of a sudden, it just everything falls apart, which he's, later we learn why it falls apart. Because, because of love. Everything yeah. falls apart because of love. Because of love. That's, uh, that's true. Uh, women. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're just kidding. But uh, <laughs> but they go, and you know they're doing all the stuff that you do when you buy a new place, and they start to see this phantom. He, he is on stage five. Yep. Box, five. Box five. Box five. And they go, and they see him, and they kind of get frightened, and they run off, and they go back, and he's actually vanished. And this is not the last time they actually see the Phantom. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you go and you actually see the new, the the main character, Raul. Raul, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see and Christine. Uh, Christine, yeah, Christine. If you've watched the new one, you know exactly who Christine is, and, and of course her love interest Raul, and some of their friends. There's a lot of extras in this. Now we have watched Dracula and all those were like maybe the main the thing you would see like 25 people, but this. You'd have a ball later that had like hundreds of people, yeah. and then, and then the big mob at the end. Yeah, the big mob. They were going down into the uh, through the cellars. I mean, it like I mean, it was there were so many that it was packed, and then yeah. the big mob seen in the streets. So the first time we see Raúl meet Christine, she tells him, you know, you just have to end the love. You know, I love you, but we just have to stop. She doesn't say why. Of course, the same way in the new movie, and it turns out because uh, the Phantom is actually controlling her. He, he's giving her singing lessons, and he's kind of back to mind control. Yeah, she, she sways yeah. on his. In, in the book, it was more of an angelic voice. I think I believe she called him her angel. Yeah. And she was like in love with his voice. She would go into like this trance-like state. Yeah, you can kind of see that in this one because she does like yeah, sit down and pray. Yeah, can, yeah. But you know, he's calling himself the master. Mm -hmm. I am your master. Yeah. And uh, talks about how much he loves her and that he's going to give her all this stuff. And about this time, the Phantom starts sending letters to the uh, the mother. What was the young girl's name? Oh, God. It's Millie Contessa? Something like that? Contessa? Well, the friend, who they don't really have anything to do with each other. They didn't even show the other singers. Yeah. But he's actually sending it to the two owners, too, to, to, to the uh, two owners, warn yeah. them that Christine is the one who's going to be singing in this play, yeah. not the other girl, or otherwise there will be a disaster. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole plot of this movie is the Phantom is in love with Christine, and he's going to see to it that she gets everything she wants to eventually it becomes unrequited love to where, of course, she loves Raul. Once she sees him. I Once mean, she, she sees him. Yeah, she was okay with letting yeah, Raul go. she was go. straight for it until she saw yeah, his face. Yeah, and she goes down to them. She sees the mask at first. She's like, at yeah. first she doesn't see him. She's like, it has this big smile on her face, like euphoric smile. And then she turns and she sees him. And then yeah. things just go bad from there. So they don't heed his warnings. And they let this other girl sing. And at first, nothing really happens. But the Phantom finally shows itself to Christine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't show his face, but she does actually meet him. And then uh, a little bit more passes. And once again, he sends another letter to the owners. Do not let this other singer play Christine. And the mother actually thinks it's Christine's friend sending a letter. But once again, they do not heed the warnings. And they let this other girl sing. And the Phantom... Well, the first time, they did heed the warning. Remember, she did get to sing the first oh, one. Oh, okay. Yeah, she did get to sing in the first one, but then this time, you know, the mother refused to step aside. Yeah. And so the Contessa, or whatever her name was, Contessa, I think that's actually like a title. Yeah. Uh, she gets... To, she sings, the, the mother's daughter. Yeah. But this time, they do not heed the warnings, and they let her sing, and the Phantom drops a chandelier on her head. And then he... And... Runs yeah. off with 
with Christine. Yeah, and he runs off with Christine, and he finally shows himself to her. But they're down inside his his catacombs. I've got the cellar five. What they call it? It's like so many cellars deep. Yeah, it was cellar cellars five deep. Uh, he had to actually take his rowboat to it, and she actually sees his lair. There's a lot of stuff she don't see, like the, the room of mirrors and all this stuff, but she's not meant to see it. And he finally shows her his face. Well, she, he doesn't show it. She as yeah, his face, that's right. face, she sneaks up behind, creeps up behind him, and you know she has a, a fat smile back on her face, like, "Oh, I'm gonna see something, you know, yeah. sexy. This is gonna be the Sandman." <laughs> 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 and she turns it off, and she pulls it off, and he turns around, and his face is all mangled. It's supposed to be like yeah. his nose messed up, his eyes, his teeth, which yeah, you know. I think this is a perfect time for a fun, a fun fact. fact. Lon Chaney was also known as a man with many faces, which would explain why he was so great at using his hands for added effect. He did his own makeup for his movies, including the use of egg membrane on his eyeballs to give him a cloudy look in the 1925 Phantom of the Opera. Lon Chaney was sought after to play the iconic role of Dracula, but became ill and passed away, and Bela Lugosi was given his part. You may also know his son, Lon Chaney Jr., who played in 1941, The Wolfman. Thanks, Maxine. That sure that was a fun fact. Brought to you by your friends at R-Rated. So, just after we left off, they're at this huge ball, the red, the red mask of the red death. Mask of the red death. You'll probably remember it from the old story. And this scene was, it's it's cinematic, cinematic classic. It is. I yeah, mean, like, when I was a child, like I would look in books, you know, we see the monster books, and this was in every one of them. Yeah, you have the red tape, and they made sure that the red tape, even in the black and white parts, that red tape stayed there. Yeah, they did. They did colorize this. This is a black and white movie, of course. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a silent film. It's black and white. But they did color this scene. Yeah. And to me, it was done great. Uh, like you said, very iconic. But from here on out, the Phantom starts killing people. Uh, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say people. He kills one. Yeah, he kills the, the guy that makes all the props. Yeah, knew, knew more. But knew too yeah. much about... Until, Eric, until this point, uh, he hadn't killed anybody. Yeah. Just because Christine and Raul uh, didn't heed his warnings and met and, and kind of expressed their love. They were going to run off together after, yeah. the, after the final performance after of the final. Falls. Yeah, but he has, you know, he, he's not going to have it, so he actually goes and kidnaps Christine for the second time of the movie. And Raul, he waits on her, and then he actually saw the Phantom earlier uh, take her through the, through the mirror. And there was this one guy who didn't have much part in the whole movie. They just show him occasionally. And, yeah. And they kind of combined from the book. Uh, there's a guy called the Turk who knew Eric, the Phantom, from before. Yeah. And this one with the inspector. And he helps Raul and they track the Phantom down into his lair and fall into a trap. Fall into a trap. It's the Room of Mirrors. You see a few trees. And the whole point of this trap is to kind of torture people. Uh, he uses a fire type uh, system. That warms them up to where it feels like hotter than the desert, mm-hmm. and and they start to sweat, and they finally find a trap door through the floor, to where they escape into, but the phantom plays some kind of secret tune that locks, locks them in. They're locks trapped them. in a thing with the barrels, uh, barrel, 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 barrel. I barrels. must be drinking barrels full of powder <laughs> that he had intended on blowing the uh, opera house up with. Yeah, so he actually gives Christina choice, marry me, and twist the scorpion. Or blow up the whole place and twist the beetle. So he actually tricks her, and she twists the scorpion to thinking it's going to save her old yeah. Yeah, to marry the phantom. And he drains all the water from his secret canal into the room that Raul and the Turk is trapped. And he is intend to, to drown them. But Christine begs, please do not kill him. I'll do whatever you want. To which he actually listens and freezing, which was another trap door underneath his car. Yeah, yeah. By this time, the the brother of the guy yeah. who had been strangled and a yeah, bunch the, of other people, uh, he said, I know where the Phantom's lair is. There's a mob, as we spoke about uh, uh, earlier. It seemed like there's hundreds of them. They're swarming in, and yeah. he, he finally sees them, and he tries to make an escape. And he, <laughs> he does grab Christine and throws her in a carriage with him and starts yeah. running down the street. And, I mean, these guys are chasing them. These guys can and run. These guys are running. 
We did have it slightly sped up. Yeah, but still, and they can but run. Like, oh my gosh, these guys what, didn't even need horses. You sang boat who? What? <laughs> the guy, the, the runner, you sang boat? Okay, he's Olympian. You'll probably know who he is. You sang boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't watch a whole lot of uh, runners. I know. I thought you said in the same boat. <laughs> no. But they, they actually don't catch the phantom, but Christine jumps out. And when she does this, the phantom gets distracted and he rents the carriage. And the so, funny thing is, she's able to jump out and stand yeah. and then fall, but his carriage is going so fast that it flips and yeah, turns it with flips. Him. So he takes off running, and finally. They pin him down beside a, a river. They come from both behind and in front of him, and they ganged up on him. I mean, there's like 200 people here. It's kind of violent. They, yeah, they get him down, and they violent. club him with the, you know, few yeah. club and blow. He, he gets a few nice punches in, too. Like, yeah, you see a few of them go flying. Yeah, you see them go flying. Like, I mean, not like, I'm just like a normal punch, and they just fall over. They go flying. And honestly, it was a pretty great ending to a, a great movie. Um, I didn't know how I'd react to a silent film, but I actually really enjoyed it. So you did? Yeah. Music played a very big part of it to kind of build suspense. They did have to overact. But they, they had to, yeah, they yeah. had to do the, oh, no, it's not like the yeah. Wolfman. They had to do the, yeah. just, uh, you know, and as I, I mean, I'm sorry, as uh, Maxine spoke about in yeah. the uh, fun fact, uh, Lauren Chaney, he was born to deaf mute parents. Well, he, he was really good at the, the movements and the overacting too, you know. Yeah. Put on more emphasis yeah, to, on to make you feel like you know. Okay, I feel I feel the emotion, mm-hmm. and I, I can only imagine what it'd be like playing in a silent film with just the the hurdles you have to to do to make it. Yeah, actually. never been able to hear anybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but guys, overall, I enjoyed it. It's, it's definitely not one of my favorites of the classic movies, uh, but it's my favorite silent film. I, I'm wondering what you would think of Nosferatu. It's a silent film too. Isn't mm-hmm. it? But I, I do, I do love this band with the opera. I mean, yeah. I mean, I do. It's not my favorite, but I, I actually do like it better than the Mummy. Really? Yeah, I do. And I mean, I do you love know, the the canal scene. I mean, I, I love the settings. It's not as good as it was. You know, could have been. It's not as good. If you read the book, you're a little bit disappointed. But you know, nothing yeah. Can hurt but it actually book. stayed quite true to the book. At the same time. It really it, it stayed closer to the book than, than anything that. I've any yeah. of those I've saw. And that's why I was going to point out when I think of the Phantom of the Opera, this is you know as we spoke yeah. with the Wolfman with Dracula. Oh, this this is the Phantom of the Opera that I think of. Guys, comment down below. Do you enjoy silent films? Is this one of your favorite movies? I wonder how many people actually yeah, watch many, silent films anymore. Yeah, how many people today, uh, somewhat newer generation, have watched silent Colonel films? I, I only watch them because of this. Because of Nosferatu. And, well, yeah. I know I like Buster Keaton. I know a few people actually watch some Buster Keaton silent films. Though. Now, I never watch any Charlie Chaplin movies. Now, the new 2007 version is one of my favorite movies of all. Of Phantom, Phantom of the Opera, Opera. Oh, yeah. it is. It was incredible. I actually like this better than that one. <laughs> I do because of the Phantom. I, I love Gerard Butler, but I don't know. He's it seems like he's only got the little part of his face. He does yeah, pull it off the Phantom to me. Yeah. So guys, also comment down below. Do you prefer the 2007 version or the 1931? Because we're kind of split. Mm-hmm. But guys, also the 13 weeks of Halloween are going to continue with Dorian Gray. Creature from Black Lagoon. Creature from Black Lagoon. Nosferatu. Nosferatu. I thought we had one other. It seems like we should. I think this is... No, this is our seventh one, is it? Is it? Let's see. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, but also, Mommy, Jekyll and Hyde. We're going to be doing a few other movies. Non-classic. Hocus Pocus, Trick or Treat, Sleepy Hollow, Medea's Boo, Boo. maybe one and two. Mm-hmm. We usually like to do one per series. Because there's a lot of Sons of Frankensteins and stuff that oh, I would yeah. like to get into that we might not be able to... But our second year, our anniversary, it would make sense two years. Frankenstein, too. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be kind of fun, I think. So look forward to that next year. And also after this, Christmas time. We're going to have some good Christmas things. I, I figure it might be a Harry Potter. For me, Harry, Harry Potter. Potter is Christmas. Yeah. If, if you watch Harry you know, Potter, they use it for both Halloween and Christmas. A new Grinch coming out. A new, we, oh, there is a new yeah, Grinch coming out. Yeah, we can out. review uh, The Man Who Invented Christmas, Charles Dickens movie came out last I've year. I've never watched that. I've never heard of that. I have it. I've been waiting for around Christmas to watch it. I do love Charles Dickens. So guys, if you enjoyed the film, please like and subscribe. Hit that bell so when the first ones know exactly when we upload. Chat down below. Chat with us because we love chatting with each and every one of you. We we'll try to get back to, to everyone's comments. And guys, I'm going to see what you how you rate oh, the movie. Oh, yeah, the rating. No, we, we, we can't the skip whole that thing part. came here for. Yeah. So I'd give it a, 
Oh my gosh, I won't give it a seven. Seven? Yeah. I, I do like it. As I said, um, I put Frankenstein in a wet dream. I cannot do that with this one either. <laughs> and you know, I do like the creature from Black Lagoon and the Wolfman, and I don't like this as much as those. So I won't be sleeping on cloud nine. So maybe a lucid dream? Sweet dream. Sweet dream. Sweet dream. I mean, that's it's, it's in the middle. I mean, yeah. I, as far as a silent film, I haven't watched a lot. I have watched some, but this is one of my favorite ones. We understand the, the lack of uh, dream words you know, we can come up with. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's only two. <laughs> yeah. There will be ten movies, five five reviews. So we understand there's going to be some lap over. Well, I'll, yeah, I mean, you know, that's just how I categorize my yeah. the numbers later on. Yeah, later we'll do and see how they stack up against each other. I'm hoping for Dracula. You're hoping for Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Retro's hoping for Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I killed him. He's not going to be on any more videos. He'll be very slow. He's going to get me very low. Right? <laughs> but, guys, this is Keeping It Real, so let's keep it real. We'll see you in your dreams. Oh, 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 oh